Welcome to Fashionology Today, your weekly fashion talk show, where you're going to meet designers, models, manufacturers, and other fashion creatives who are going to share their products and tell their stories during our live weekly 30-minute TV show, right here only on the Fashion Network, FNTV. Today's guest, Barbara Kavchok. Today is June 27th, 2023, and you're watching Fashionology Today. Hello and welcome to Fashionology Today on Fashion Network FNTV, your headquarters to all fashion-driven TV shows. And I'm Annie Rigsby, your host of the weekly Fashionology Talk Show. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest today. She is a magician. She is magical in every way. The, the, the garments she creates, the way she does it, uh, very hands-on, sustainably, thoughtfully done, and so much more. Without further ado, let's introduce you to Barbara Kavchok. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I was speaking with you uh, pre-show, and the time flew by. I mean, it was like 10 minutes, and it just flew. Uh, because you have so much to share, uh, in that it's an extraordinary uh, story as far as uh, the way I look at it, the way that you as a designer um, have not relished to uh, manufacturing in big batch manufacturing uh, to basically make a lot of money. You have found your way, uh, done very well, of course, and done so through a hands-on approach. Um, I'd love you to just take our viewers um, through your story, where, where you began, how you began, and of course, it goes back to uh, your grandma and watching her. Actually, it was my my mother. Um, my mother. mother had her own um, label, her own uh, bridal That's line. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I grew up watching her um, create. And I mean, like the only thing I ever played with exclusively was Barbie dolls, and only for the clothes. Like I, that was all I ever did, and all I ever thought about was was clothing, um, drawing yes. drawing my own dresses from an early age. The first thing I could draw, like really was really everything I thought about. Uh, and so, you know, um, I I went though, I kind of went in a different direction in, in college. I went into fine art because I really was good at drawing. I didn't yet have the, you know, sewing and pattern making skills. Um, I went into the fine art realm, but I circled the back um, and ended up kind of working with my my mom in her business as I was kind of pursuing my mural mural painting illustration, realizing that this is where I belonged all along. Incredible. Um, yeah, but I, I'm very grateful for that detour because I, it gives me a very different perspective um, to my approach to design, Absolutely. which I think has helped me now that I've realized that over the years, like and bringing that into it, that experience. So. Um, yeah, so the, the rest is history. I worked with her and then um, eventually learning the, the craft and skill of pattern making and, and sewing and, and just all that goes into making a couture gown. Right. Um, and garment. there is a distinction. From inside and out, you know. Oh, um, absolutely. There is. Yeah, definitely. It's a painstaking process of skill and craft. And it is. Yeah, so and that's, that's why I was saying a, a magician, you know, it's, oh. it's, it's no, it really, I, uh, as a designer who does not make couture, um, although I don't ever do, um, I've never done um, big batch manufacturing um, for my own label. Uh, I am a small batch productionist as well. Uh, having a team, a team that you can, you know, it, just for any viewers that are watching, it is a, it's an un- uh, unimaginable and you cannot put words to being able to as a designer sketch something on ipad paper whatever your form is hand it to your seamsters two hours later have them come back with some sort of muslin fitting mm -hmm. and say nope tuck here smidge here change this lower this add a hem and watching it be created um, is really unlike anything else. And for you to be able to do that through a it's couture. Great. great control. Yeah, you have much yeah. more control. I think, oh, I mean, yeah. there are benefits to both the ready to wear side and the couture side. I mean, we can't wear couture every day, all day. <laughs> That'd be great. True. But like, we don't live in that world. 
Um, but my, what I think, you know, really needs to be, the reason that I'm in bridal specifically is because it's truly the one time that you wear this extravagant gown that you kind of have yes. the license to, you know, wear something so extravagant. I mean, not all of us go to red carpet events. Not all of us go to the Oscars and galas and, right. and, and all that. So this is like accessible to most people where they can really enjoy that. Um, I mean, I love, I love weddings and I love love, but the real reason I'm in bridal is because it's my opportunity to bring that experience to everybody, yes. you know, most people. Um, and so I, I really relish that because it's not just designing for this like exclusive group of people. It's, it's really for everybody. Absolutely. Um, and you can take something that is painstakingly made by hand mm -hmm. uh, and change it in so many ways when you have that control. Yes. Uh, real quick, about how many hours goes into making one of your extraordinary gowns? It is, varies greatly, but at least at least 12 to 15 hours of Absolutely. just working like on that, on that garment. But yes. uh, some gowns can take Gosh, up to yeah. an entire week. Oh, of, absolutely. Yeah. Just painstakingly sewing and moving and crafting that piece. I'm going to show a quick video here of um, just some of your work. Um, we did put this on Instagram. I believe it was yesterday, but um, it's a beautiful video real quick. And I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Let's watch this real quick. Fashion is fine art. It should not be disposable or unethically produced in overseas factories. It should be cared for, paid attention to, and honored in a way that represents the person adorning the piece. I'm Barbara Kapchak, and my purpose is to create pieces of wearable art that encourage self-expression, inspire creativity, and hold meaning behind every stitch. Oh my goodness, it, it, exceptional. Uh, the purple piece um, to me is a great bridesmaid dress and actually I would love it personally to be made into a skirt and, you know, oh, I'd throw a pair of con boots, like my con, like uh, combat boots with it and a rock and roll t-shirt and awesome. I'd, wear it, I'd wear it every day. I mean, I would love that juxtaposition. <laughs> Right. I mean, if that's, that's the type of pieces you're designing that are met gala quality and also changing it to where you can wear it every day uh, to be able to do that is uh, very, very rare, actually. Uh, let's talk about one of the things that has you just passionate right now. Um, and it's currently an ongoing, um, you know, open to the public type of ex exhibition that's mm -hmm. offered by Arts Quest. Um, tell us about this. So uh, a couple of years ago, I had this opportunity. I was, it was actually, we were, I approached the Banana Factory, which is a local, it's part of Arts Quest. Um, they're, they have galleries, they have artist studios, and it's in the Lehigh Valley, which is a little north of Philadelphia here. And um, I approached them about something unrelated to the exhibit, but then they came back to me and said, you know what, we have this idea. They had never done a fashion exhibit before. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of got together and I was kind of rediscovering my, um, my whole purpose as a mm -hmm. designer, as an artist, which is to you know, inspire people to be kind of the best versions of themselves. Um, that's really like my, that was what I discovered during this time. This is like around 2021, mm -hmm. 2020, 2021. And um, we came up with this idea to have this, this solo fas fashion exhibition with mm -hmm. my work. I had a couple pieces already kind of created that were like the spawn of the idea, which mm -hmm. was the uh, dichotomy between the natural and artificial world. And it, there's a whole artist statement that I developed and, and created. And uh, so I made 13 pieces in total over the last two years. And this is something I had been working on on my own, apart from the bridal and, yeah. and special occasion. Incredible. Um, yeah, but I'm very proud of it because it's inspired me to kind of change and, and be a little more bold in the bridal. Mm -hmm which I think we're ready for now. Um, I think people are, are open, more open-minded, you know, to break out of the like traditional box of what bridal in 
exactly which can even just mean a pantsuit um i'm seeing more and more print color like i mean there's just there's a lot more options for people now Mm -hmm. so this was just such a great opportunity it just opened up it just debuted the exhibit finally just it just couldn't believe that it was um that it that it's actually here because now it's happening two two and a half years in the making uh, two years or so in the making wow and uh yeah so it's it's going on now and it's on until the uh, end of august so so I'm very proud of it. You can still go see it. Now, I know you, you need it. to see it in person, um, which is in Pennsylvania. Um, yes. If people can't see it in person, do they offer any type of, um, you know, direct via digital technology opportunity? Well, if you go to my website, I have a page mm-hmm. about the exhibit. And we have all the professional okay, exhibit. It's like the exhibit book, the digital exhibit book. Perfect. And you can see all the pieces. I am um, in the works right now and in talking with different um, yeah. uh, other galleries and um, museum spaces that uh, are open to hosting the show. So potentially this could be a traveling exhibition too. So oh. that's what we're working on now. That's kind incredible. Of setting that up. Oh, I mean, it's incredible. And the ability for you to uh, stick with it for this long, uh, you can tell it obviously means a lot to you. And what means a lot to you is uh, the industry as a whole. And uh, we're going to step aside for a commercial break. When we do come back, um, I'd like to talk about uh, the sustainable aspect and wearable art um, that you spoke about in that video. Um, We'll be right back. Uh, after this commercial from FedEx, and we thank all of our advertisers. Stay with us. There's a couple, there's a couple things, there's a couple things I'd like to say to you. After all, after all the crazy, after all the crazy things that we've been through. Needed you in the dead of night The wake of the day first broken light And blind I'd fall I'd follow you I never realized how much I needed you Comfort What we deliver By delivering And welcome back, everyone. You're watching Fashionology today on the Fashion Network. Today is June 27th, and we've got Barbara Kavchok with us today. Uh, If you're just joining us, uh, talking about her magical uh, wedding gowns and formal wear um, that exudes her strength um, by by being able to stick with um, being a a small batch production company, which is, um, it's very real to me. Uh, It means so much to me to meet another designer that does small batch production. Um, I want to put up on the screen here. um, Oh, that photo is not going to come up too big there. I'm going to grab here a couple photos for everyone to see because um, what you're doing is extraordinary. So while we grab these photos, um, tell me a little bit about um, how your dreams of becoming um, a designer at the Met Gala, for example, how are you going to make that happen? What do you want to see done? Well, I hope to develop, I mean, this is a great question, right? Um, (laughs) The million dollar question, but I I hope to develop relationships with the stylists um, who who work at those events um, just to really, uh, I mean, exhibit and show the potential of what I can do for them and their clients. And I think, I mean, I really, my imagination, when someone says, do you have ideas? It's like, I can't stop the ideas. You know, they they just come out. So there's no shortage of that. Um, There's no shortage of inspiration. And I just, where do you get your inspiration? Most, most of the time. I think just popular culture. I mean, it's hard to pinpoint what that, yeah. uh, for this particular um, for, for this particular show that I did this exhibit really had a lot to do with COVID and, and what was going on. And um, yeah. I just remember seeing like the really quick, the background of it was my like anxiety and fear seeing 
Times Square completely empty. Yes. And like, you know, I thought in my head of um, the movie, <laughs> this is kind of silly, but the movie 12 Monkeys. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah, um, seen that. So in the movie, it's very similar. They, they had to go underground because of like this, uh, you know, pandemic that forced, okay. that forced them to go underground. When they resurfaced, New York City was completely taken over by vegetation. And I just, it was just such an interesting concept to me yeah. of like the earth reclaiming, you know, what, what we've made. Yes. Yeah, kind of like mm -hmm. digesting. Full circle. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the beginnings of the, wow. uh, yeah, the, the beginning of the pieces started. And then towards the end, it kind of morphed into the what's happening now with artificial intelligence and like my fears <laughs> of that. So it's kind of like right. me kind of struggling with the pros and cons of what's happening in the, in the world around us and like the direction we're moving. I mean, that sounds super um, deep. Yeah, and it sounds very creative. It sounds like uh, words coming from a creative person. Um, actually it's, it, but it's not that way for necessarily all of my inspiration. Sometimes it's very simple and, and mm -hmm. it can be, it just, you, you pay attention to what, sometimes you do the work, you do a design and then later discover where, what was my purpose in doing right. this? You learn something about yourself after Absolutely. you've done it. And it's so interesting for me as both being, um, you know, the duality of a businesswoman, but also a fashion designer, the, the duality of both of those brains um, that seem to work for me that, um, I, you know, I often have my inspiration is architectural. It's, it's earthbound, yes. um, creating all of my own prints um, and fabrics to then make items. Um, actually, there's a few behind me. Um, hard to see, but yeah, they're all my own prints that are, um, cool. you know, created in house. And I think for any designer to be able to have something that um, is unique to themselves is is obviously going to stand out to those stylists and um, you know different people that are you're going to meet along the way to hopefully get you at the Met Gala. Um, I'm going to try once again here to pull up a couple of these photos. Um, all right, there there's one. Now it's it's not really how it's supposed to appear on the screen, but um, I'm glad we're at least able to get it up today. I, I mean, I am just moved by this piece. This is one that I picked to show. Um, can you tell us about this a little bit? And is the, uh, you know, is the facial piece separate? Is it? It is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that was, so this piece, there's actually two pieces. They're looking at each other. She's the light, wow. sort of innocent piece. Her name is Eden, kind of like reminiscent of the Garden of Eden. She's okay. purity, she's innocence. Um, these uh, appliques that wow. you see, many of them have actually been painted, mm. hand painted. Um, some of them were already really? colored. Yeah, yeah. So there, because I wanted certain palettes um, and certain pieces, so I painted some of them. Oh, that's um, beautiful. But it's, it's a lot. It's meant to be... Um, punched up and just extreme yeah. like that's the idea so absolutely. it's almost otherworldly that that was like a yeah you know absolutely so but again you know i mean i i would say that my style is very um you know it's a classic timeless but very much also has an edge to it mm -hmm. um i like to i don't like to push boundaries it just is my natural style um and again i wear this to a wedding you know as a guest and i would probably wear my shout out to r13 combat boots that have some floral um you know it's they're covered in floral themed um, I think it'd be gorgeous with a pink Chanel handbag. I mean, it's, I agree. <laughs> it, it, it's a stunning uh, piece in itself. And, and the mask, um, probably not something I would wear for a wedding guest, but it's definitely screams Met Gala. Um, when you see the mask, actually the mask is, the, the mannequins had no face, right? So I, mean, I wanted beautiful. to imply a face, but the back yeah. of the, it's actually on tool and it's braided, a long oh. braid along the back. So it's a, like a white, long, long braid. Um, and it, we just, I, I felt that it it's enhanced. It's incredible. Me. I you. mean, it's incredible. Uh, take us through the this photo here. Now, um, there's um, those three actually that you see, the wow. um, the uh, purple, violet mm -hmm. one with 
all of the shredded pieces sure. of fabric that's like faux feather. Amazing. Um, that was one of the first pieces I did in the collection. Wow. Um, it's kind of meant to be like a feather, kind of the, uh -huh. the name of the dress is Phoenix, kind of like a bird rising <laughs> yes, from the ashes. Yes. And these are on the, these are in the exhibition right now. They are, yes. 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 And then all the way to the right, um, the gray dress, that's olive. Wow. That actually, um, that dress, it's meant to be very architectural. Um, yeah, absolutely. Kind of have that look to it. Yes. But that dress, actually, we've done for many brides. It's actually gone to several, both of, all three of them have gone to styled shoots um, before the exhibition. And um, we've made a couple of them for brides that have found them on Instagram or through, sure. you know, different uh publication uh, not publications but online and yes. um we've made them for people and eat in different colors too and there's so hand it's painting or you know there's some sort of applique on the what appears to be the gray dress the third yes. one to the right that's right there is painting on Beautiful. that too. and unfortunately i don't know why but i can't see the the far right one enough but yes. it looks like it's some sort of pants suit in a way yes, it is it is there's a two piece. Um, the it's top stunning. portion is connected to the high low peplum skirt, which oh. has ruffles. And then the, there's a capri pant, peg leg pant that has ap applique at the bottom. It's it. That one's also very wearable. I mean, uh, they're incredible. They're Thank just you. beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, you could probably take the top of the peplum and wear yeah. it, you know, with, with a skirt. With denim. With yeah, or I was going to oh, go yeah. with jeans oh, yeah. and some pink heels would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but that's what's so great about what you're doing, um, that you are, uh, you're doing, you're designing multifaceted, whether it's for brides that come to meet you to specifically do a conservative gown mm -hmm. or exhibitions and, and everything in between. Yeah. Um, we do have to take one more commercial break. Um, when we come back, I just, I, you know, I just love talking with you. So I look forward to doing that again. Um, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Rise entrepreneur. Take that first step towards freedom. So long to the old routine. Welcome to your new venture. There's an industry that needs disrupting. Ideas you should be challenging. It takes courage to do what you love. We'll help you begin your journey. As a business like you, dedicated to you, we can take on tomorrow together with a business account you could open today. Entrepreneurs across the UK, start your business with Tide. Welcome back. You're watching Fashionology today on the Fashion Network, where you can watch all fashion all the time on any device, which is what is so great about having the Fashion Network. You know, Barbara, we're talking with you today um, about everything to do with your work, um, from where you started, why you started, where you want to go. One thing you answered um, in preparation for the interview on our show sheet uh, was talking about what you wish for the industry to come. And something, um, it struck me because it's also something that I have seen uh, and also I have been told many times over, which is essentially um, the fashion industry is an industry that is not inclusive. Um, it is not an industry where people um, want to help each other, actually. Um, it's not an industry where people are saying, you know, Call me, I will help you, and I will get you into this store or this event. It just isn't happening. Um, and you'd like to see that different, as would I. Um, one of the reasons I did create the whole fashion network, actually, is to, to fulfill the three Cs, uh, which are, you know, connect, collaborate, and create. Um, the industry has so much to give. It's unfortunate that it is so exclusive. Um, I'm going to ask you a question here in a second. The reason I feel it's this way, believe it or not, I'm going to have so many women screaming at me, uh, but it's because I, I still believe it's more woman run than man. Um, and women tend to be that way. That's how I feel. Um, what do you see happening that you, how could you envision it changing to be more inclusive? Well, <clears throat> I mean, I learned this, that I thought all industries were like this, but I had a friend who was in design and in, in interior design, and she would help me when I, you know, early on at uh, my trade, at the trade shows at Bridal Fashion Week. Sure. And she's like, why, why are you guys so like, you don't 
you know, no. you don't mingle with the designers like the way we mingle with each other as as interior designers. And I was like, that's a possible. I didn't know that that was something right. that people people did. And um, actually, it is changing. Um, I am part of a group that I exhibit with um, for, for Bridal Week called Horizon Bridal. And it's run by another designer who truly okay. made like this wonderful collective. I mean, it really is special. I've been part of it now for uh, three shows that we've been okay. doing. And it really does feel like everyone's there to help each other, like have the best show. We're not we're right. not um, fighting for each other's customers. You know what I mean? It's like, it's truly like we all do different things That's and right. we can celebrate that. And so I don't think it's like a, we're not, you know, there's not this level of competition. We're not threatened by one another. Um, and and I think, God. yeah, exactly. And it's, it's unfortunate that um, that is the overall feeling out there. Um, yeah. I, I was telling, you know, um, my husband recently that there are thousands of designers and brands to go with those designers that people don't know. And yet those brands are actually doing very well. Uh, it seems to me that the, you know, handful, 10 or so, um, designers that are more household names like Tori Birch, Veronica Beard, in women's wear, of course, um, yeah. are the brands that um, people think are out there. And then yet there are so many uh, thousands of brands that exist. Um, I think the industry, I think the industry is changing, though, with Instagram and Pinterest and just yes. the accessibility for, for people to do their own like research and find an right. indie designer um, is so much easier for people yes. to do now. And I think that has helped some of the little guys come up. And, you know, I think that that is, is showing like a paradigm shift in our in the culture and in fashion and how we how we find what we like. That's yeah. right. Um, I actually am going to put up on the screen here um, a company called um, Soho Muse. I don't know. Have you heard of it? Um, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Soho Muse is, um, sorry about that. Soho Muse. Uh, basically, um, one of our judges for an upcoming competition, the designer debut competition, where the winner actually is going to receive a $25,000 um, New York Fashion Week runway show in September. Um, competition closes on Saturday morning, July 1st. Um, so anyone, including you, can enter still. Um, the Soho Muse is uh, one of our judges. Um, the, her name is Consuelo Vanderbilt of the Vanderbilt family. Yeah. Um, it is her passion project. And the goal is to provide a space where all creatives within the industry can be inclusive. Um, it's similar to our foundation, the, the fashion forum, um, where people get together within the fashion forum. It's all digital. Um, any member of the fashion network can be involved. Collaborating occurs, creating, uh, these are the type of places that I think, and along with the horizon, um, development that you spoke about, uh, those are places that hopefully change can occur. Um, but it'll be a long time till it happens, um, you know, exclusively. Uh, but I think everyone is doing their part. We only have a minute and a half or so left, believe it or not, of today's show. Um, we are talking to Barbara Kavchok, who is designer extraordinaire. Uh, one last question. What is your favorite item to design? Oh, well... <laughs> The Big most question. extravagant piece, just mm. something very, very like otherworldly. I want it to not be ordinary. I want it to have different yeah. shapes. Um, just, just a Met Gala style gown. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we at the Fashion Network are all crossing our fingers and wishing you the best. And that hopefully someday you will be at the Met Gala, maybe wearing your own design. Wow. Me being there too. That would. <laughs> That's what I'm putting out in the universe. Right I like now. it. I like it. <laughs> and if we manifest it, something will happen. Um, and we do. We wish you the best. Um, I am thrilled to have had the opportunity to speak with you. You are so down to earth. Oh, Very easy to talk to. Likewise. Um, 
Yeah, it's been amazing. I'm sure we're going to talk more um, off air and it's exciting to get to know you. So for everyone watching, thank you again, everyone, our millions of viewers. It's been extraordinary the last six months watching how quickly the company continues to grow. Um, and I just need to leave everyone with, don't forget the designer debut TV show and competition. Um, it is still available. You can enter to win up until July 1st. So that's this coming Saturday. Go online to the fntv.com designer debut page and enter today. And we're going to leave everyone with one last commercial. Um, thank you so much for being with us, everyone. Thank you, Barbara. Talk to you guys soon. See you next week on Fashionology Today. Well, there's pecan turtles. Pecan bear claws, pecan fudge, there's pecan toffee, there's pecan coffee, roasted pecans, pecan pesto, pecan streusel, pecan waffles, pecan pound cake, pecan Georgia grown cake, pecans, pecan the healthy nut cake. for any occasion. There's Support local farmers. Cake, Make sure the bag says Georgia grown. Pecan crusted trout, pecan crusted.